Welcome back, this is Tech for 10, following up with a review of the 2018 ASUS Zephyrus S GX531GS. Now, this model has Intel 6 core i7-8750H processor, like many of the 2018 laptops I've reviewed thus far. Can turbo up to 3.9 GHz, and like always, can handle most productivity tasks and a great step above the i7-7700HQ from last year. Now, this model does come with a GTX 1070 Max-Q, 8GB, with 16 gigabytes of dual channel RAM, 8 gigabytes being soldered and 8 gigabytes with a RAM stick. And a 15.6 1080p screen at 144 hertz display, you'll have great time gaming. With Nvidia Optimus, you'll also get the extra battery savings. Now, it does come in with a 512 gigabyte M.2 drive and the price used for about $1,100 to $1,200 is the best of the box experience I've had so far with 2018 gaming laptops. Now let's have a closer look at the laptop. Going right into the design, weighing in at 4.6 pounds, it is on par with the 2018 Razer Blade 15, while being slightly heavier than the MSI GS65, which was at weight at 4.1 pounds. Now measuring 14 inches by 10.6 inches by 0.63 inches, it is easily the slimmest laptop I've reviewed, and also I'm very impressed with SUS and how they can make such a slim gaming laptop have such great performance and thermals. Now holding the MSI GS65 and the Zephyrus, you can feel the Zephyrus feels more refined and also polished, while on the other hand the GS65 noticeably feels much lighter, but also slightly more fragile. Personally, I would take the well-built chassis of the ASUS over the MSI GS65 any day of the week. Now featuring ASUS's active air dynamic system, the underside of the laptop Toward the rear opens up when lifting up the screen, increasing the airflow and ultimately the longevity of the laptop with better thermals. With a strong magnesium alloy build, ultrabook like slimness, and futuristic, futuristic styling, it is honestly one of my favorite reviewed laptops of 2018. Taking a look at the inside, starting from the top, you can find a 720p web camera as it should be, and uh, going further down, you'll find the screen, which is a to VA panel, 144Hz screen, which 2018 models have been releasing lately. But also, this screen is also extra good because it has excellent vibrancy, also along with a 3 millisecond response time, which will be great for those gaming sessions. Now, the bezels are nice and slim at 77 millimeters. a welcome change considering last year's model had huge 157 millimeters bezels, which screened the early 2000s. Now the hinge mechanism feels sturdy, and although it may not have the same 180 degrees opening as other gaming laptops, the hinges feel just right that you can one open the laptop with one finger. As for color accuracy, it is on average with sitting at about 91% sRGB rating and 64% Adobe RGB, which is more enough for games, maybe not the best for creative designers, but just great for games. As for brightness, the display sits around average for gaming laptops with 294 nits of brightness, uh, great for indoor use, and thankfully okay for outdoor use thanks to the matte the screen, but I would still have preferred to see something again over 300 nits. Now with the slimmer bezels, the improved response time to 3 milliseconds, paired with the 144Hz screen, paired with the relatively okay brightness. You, this will gladly handle gaming on the go in the slimmest form factor that you can find today. Going down and looking at the keyboard, you can find that it's not the usual keyboard layout that you're used to, and I wasn't quite sure how I'd feel about it as well. Now, after typing on it for some time, I did find the keycaps were large enough to get a nice comfortable feel of where the keys were, and uh, typing, my only gripe was the key travel there, was a little short. And I overall, but just did not like the typing experience on this laptop, especially since the keyboard was pushed to the front, makes it near impossible to type on my lap, which since I'm rarely at home for more than four hours at a time, uh, working or doing things or uh, meeting with a girlfriend and her family, uh, I'm, it's better to actually have something that I can lap comfortably and actually move on the go without having to find a countertop wherever I go. Now, after typing the script using this keyboard, I was ecstatic to be going back to the MSI GS65 and the ThinkPad laptop that I have. Now, RGB lighting is a little dim, even at full brightness, and the key lighting is single zone, not multi-zone or individually lit. However, I did like the lighting on the very bottom of the, of the ventilid, which is presents itself once you open up the laptop and the ventilation shaft on the wire bottom opens up. 
Now, the trackpad is fast and smooth, but a little small for me, with a nifty feature that switches it to a numpad with a tablet button, which I thought was a cool solution, but using it, probably <laughs> I won't really use it because uh, I prefer more a tactile feel when it comes to my numpads. Now, overall, the keyboard placement, which definitely helped thermal cooling the laptop components, is a double-edged sword, since the typing experience just gets an eh from me as I reach for other laptops or computers when I need to type, game, or be on the move for prolonged periods. Talking quickly about the speakers, this is where ASUS has the right idea. Considering the super slim form factor, the fact that they're able to pack a decent punchy sound was further complemented by the fact that ASUS made the speakers face the user. Yes, the speakers are actually facing the user. Um, with clean and accurate mids and highs, it reaches the volumes of 74 decibels, which is truly impressive for this slim chassis and provides a great experience for the end user. With every pro comes a compromise, and here it is. ASUS got rid of the Thunderbolt 3 port from last year's model, and considering all laptops in the same price bracket, the Gigabyte Air 15, the MSI GS65, and Razer Blade 15 all have it, it makes it feel even more out of place. Now starting on the left side, from left to right, house the power jack, USB-C 3.0, two USB 2.0 ports, 3.5 millimeter audio combo jack, and yes, I did say two USB 2.0 ports. Um, not quite sure what they're thinking here, but anyways, continuing on, the right side consists of a USB-C 3.1 Gen 2, which supports display output, and a single USB 3.1 Gen 2 port, which is uh, unacceptable because there's only one USB 3.0 port and uh, two USB 2.0 ports, but continuing. So by itself, and comparing it to its competitors, it has the weakest port selection I've seen. Looking like it came out in 2016 and not 2018 like it did. As for performance, this is where the laptop shines. With its out of the box and bench score top in the charts of 2018 slim gaming laptops, it beats out the MSI GS65, smokes out the Razer Blade 15, and on par with the Gigabyte Aero 15 in standard mode. Now kick it off the turbo and it decimates the competition with a stock Cinebench R15 score right out the box of 1235. And this is with Audi thermal repaste with Audi undervolting. Now at this point the question is how can you do this so right, get the performance and the cooling thermal so right, but as you'll see, little things here and there just, they just can't get right. Now, ASUS has the same i7-8750H processor and the 16GB of RAM in dual channel and it's leaps and bounds ahead of its 2018 competition, at least out of the box. And I'm sure with more power can be derived, gotten out of it, if you actually make some adjustments. Now the performance of the laptop can be, in my mind, be attributed to this very effective cooling design, which helps the i7-8750H stay cool, which helps the laptop keep its boost close to 3.9 gigahertz, with occasional dips below to 3.7 gigahertz. The single MVMe M.2 solid state provides great performance with compromise here being that there's only one. Hey, yeah, you only get one M.2 slot, that's it. So any expansion requires replacing that M.2 slot. As for gaming, the GTX 1070 Max Hue in this laptop has the best frame rates of all the GTX 1070 Max laptops that I've tested out of the 2018 MSI G65, Gigabyte Aero 15, and the HP Omen 15 that I've all reviewed on my channel. Now on the screen, you'll see the average frame rates and that you can expect from this configuration. All right, let's talk about the heat and the thermal design. The thermal profile for this laptop is impeccable with ASUS's R&D reflected in the highest in class benchmarks and gaming performance. The open clamshell thermal flap that opens at the bottom is engineered well and improved upon last year's design with the bottom flap being made of magnesium alloy instead of the plastic from last year. Having the slimmest and also one of the most durable all-metal chassis on the market with top class performance is not an easy feat. Temperatures while idle, the temperatures hovered around 30 degrees Celsius with light load raising temps between 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. Now while gaming and putting a heavy load on a laptop such as running Prime 95 or Furmark, the CPU and GPU never reached above 90 degrees Celsius with its temperatures settling in the high 70s and low 80s. Um, with minimal with no throttling, maintaining a high boost clock of above 3.7 GHz during most tests. 
tempers can only get better with the undervolt and therm repaste but i felt like it didn't really need it uh, considering it's already the class leader in gaming benchmarks and cooldown however to get an idea of the performance increase you can expect i ran cinebench r20 before and after a, ne a negative 125 millivolt undervolt and you can see that there's still a lot of performance that can be had with a slight undervolt now currently as far as slim gaming laptops are concerned none can beat this thermal design Looking at the noise, during light loads such as watching YouTube videos or typing, the fans are relatively quiet with a max of 30 decibels and a minimum of 27 decibels. Now while heavy under load, the fans do ramp up to about 47 to 53 decibels, which gets into the territory where I suggest using headphones uh, since it can get a little bit loud. Another compromise that this laptop makes to get its slimness is in battery size. The 50 watt hour battery is very small, considering the slightly thicker Gigabyte Air 15, slim Razor Blade 15, and the lightest MSI GS65 all have above 80 watt hours of battery life. And while idle with minimal brightness and Wi-Fi off, the best case scenario I got was 3 hours and 30 minutes. Now while turning the Wi-Fi on and browsing the web, I expected run times to be close to about 2 hours and 30 minutes, which is unacceptable. Now forget about the gaming, since without the power brick, since I can only muster up to 50 minutes uh, with medium brightness, not even high brightness. Now you will, well, you could argue that the performance you get out of this laptop, why would you even leave the house without power brick? I would say that's true, since any serious laptop gamer wouldn't dream of leaving the house without power brick. But the slim form factor of this chassis just begs to be brought on the go without any cables tying it down. But their battery life just doesn't back out the mobile laptop look Asus is going for. I feel like Asus created this laptop as basically to say its computers, we can build a faster, cooler, and slimmer laptop than all of you without thinking about the end user and who's going to actually want to buy this laptop. Um, because I'm sure that the end user would love all those things, including uh, longer battery life. The SUS is upgradable, if only a little bit, with a slight complicated bottom panel to remove, but it's not necessarily worth the hassle to even open it. Now when you do remove the cover, you have access to one M.2 slot and one RAM slot. The second 8GB of RAM is sold to the motherboard so you can adjust that, and the base configuration comes with 16GB of RAM, which is great because it comes out the box dual channel, which is great for any gaming laptop and uh, so it gets the best game performance you can get with the 8GB of solder and 8GB of dim memory. The only reason to open the laptop in my eyes would be to upgrade the 512 M.2 NVMe drive since a the thermal repaste isn't really necessary with out-of-box thermals as it is. I would have preferred to have at least had one more M.2 slot to make this a valid mobile gaming laptop to house all my games but it doesn't and that is my only gripe with upgradability. In summary, as follows, the pros are super thin and lightweight, excellent 144Hz display, and quick 3 millisecond response time. Best in class gaming and cooling, great all metal chassis, and front firing speakers. The cons are as follows, the awkward keyboard design with short key travel, the poor port selection with a lack of Thunderbolt 3 and only one USB 3.0 port, dim backlight LEDs with only single zone RGB lighting, poor battery life, lack of an ethernet port for hardcore gamers and uh, it does scream gamer wherever you go with minimal upgradability. Now revisiting the initial concept of my thumbnail, ASUS doesn't have the best out of box performance. Uh, yes it does. It does have the best out of box performance of all the GTX 1070 Max Q laptops I've used with its factory dual channel RAM, 144Hz display, and amazing cool design all contributing to its amazing performance. However, there are some caveats. First, not enough battery life to be affordable. Next, not enough expansion to hold gaming libraries that most gamers would have. And lack of Thunderbolt 3 for future proofing. With awkward typing experience and trackpad, uh, <laughs> gaming, forget gaming, or even productivity. Now, the Asus RG Zephyrus S is probably the perfect example of laptop manufacturers taking the slim gaming laptops too far. Sure. Asus has created an insane 15 inch gaming powerhouse, but it compromises on too much to make it a true mobile gaming, typing, or anything other than a plug in gaming laptop. Thus rendering the fact that it's the slimmest laptop 
a mute point. So yes, does it have the best out of box performance versus competitors and with the same components? Sure, but it's still short of becoming the best out of box gaming laptop. That's pretty much it for this video. Links for this mod is listed below. And if you could please like and subscribe, we'll get you more content here. If you have any questions, please let me know, leave in a comment. This has been Tech for 10, signing off till next time.